Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel and today I'm talking about Philadelphia Eagles football 2023 season week 8 matchup against the Washington Commanders and the Eagles come up top of this one, 30-31. Another tough, hot football game between our divisional rival. I don't know what's going on with the Commanders. Seems like they play one time, they play, they only score seven. This week, they score 31. So, I don't know what's going on with the Commanders. But, overall, with the Eagles' performance, uh, I don't like them. Well, they don't, there's a lack of running the game. I don't like to have that. They need to run the ball with Yonti Swift more. I don't like the effect they give to Kenny Gainwell in in near the red zone after he turned it, getting it to turn it over. I don't see what makes the difference. I think they should give more carries to Yonti Swift. Uh, AJ Brown had another record game with another consecutive game over 100 yards receiving. He has the most in in NFL history right now. Consecutive games with 100 yards or 100 some yards receiving, and the Eagles did come up to 30 win this one. Uh, Jalen Hurts, you can tell he's not 100%, he's got like a knee injury, you can tell getting close to the bye. Uh, so they find ways to win. Uh, Eagles did have two turners a fumble by King Gamewell and a fumble on the brotherly shove. I think he didn't, Hurts didn't, did not, didn't get this, didn't get the ball in quick enough. Uh, and, it, and they got loose. It wasn't like, wasn't like his fault or anything like that. It just happened. So, uh, it can be possible. And the you can shut, you can do, you can shut it down. And plus another thing, they do a fake, uh, fake, uh, Philly shove. It more like a Philly sweep. So you can just do that. They got a late touchdown. Overall, uh, it was just a lot of passing, uh, high scoring game. It was interesting. So. I just think that the Eagles should run the ball more. I keep preaching it, but it's just, it's just, I just keep preaching it and nothing changes. Eventually, it's going to have to change where you have to be more balanced. But uh, Jalen Hurts had a fourth touchdown game. Uh, he did the one fumble, but it was his fault. Uh, I think he find ways to run the ball more. Uh, the, uh, AJ Brown with two touchdowns. Devontae Smith caught one when he was wide open. Uh, and Julio Jones caught one for a touchdown as well. So I'm happy they just, Eagles just find ways to win football games. They just find ways to win football games. It was a close seven point game. Uh, Commanders went, went down fighting. So let's talk stats here and get to the scoring and defensive stats. And my favorite games are going to have to be, I will say, I will give it to Jalen Hurts. On the offensive side of the ball, and I give it to Reed Blankenship with the key interception. So, offense, my offensive player of the game, Jalen Hurts. Defense player, yeah, I would say Reed Blankenship. Maybe they do much, but I think the key that the interception was the key turnover for, the, for that game. So, Eagles with 374 total, 374 total net yards. Washington had 472. Eagles had three penalties for 14 yards. Washington had seven penalties for 79 yards. Eagles had 28 minutes and 31 seconds. Washington had 31 minutes and 29 seconds. Hurts, 29 for 38, 319 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. Sam Howe, 39 for 52, 497 yards, four touchdowns, the one interception. Both quarterbacks played very well. But I just think both teams did not try to run the football. Uh, DeAndre Swift, 16 carries, 57 yards, and one touchdown. Jalen Hurts, four carries, six yards, no touchdowns. Kenny Gainwell, two carries, negative yards, and a fumble. Uh, Robinson, 10 carries, 59 yards. Gibson, 2 carries, 14 yards. Howe, 3 attempts, 11 yards. Brown, 1 attempt, no yards. Okay, receiving, A.J. Brown, 8 catches, 103 yards, a touchdown. Devontae Smith, 7 catches, 90 yards. Um, AJ, excuse me, A.J. Brown, 8 catches, 103 yards, 2 touchdowns. Devontae Smith, 7 catches, 90 yards, 1 touchdown. Dallas got 4 catches, 36 yards. Kenny Gainwell, 5 catches, 30 yards. Julio Jones caught 1 for 8 for a touchdown in the red zone. Stadium on Swift caught 2 for 7. Zachary caught 1 for 5. Boston caught 1 for 4. On the Washington Commanders side, Dotson, 8 catches, 108 yards, 1 touchdown. Crowder, 7 catches, 95 yards, touchdown. Terry McLaurin, 1 catch, I mean, 5 catches, 
63 yards, one touchdown. So I was six catches, 44 yards, and a touchdown. Gibson, five catches, 28 yards. Samuel, four catches, 22 yards. Robinson, two catches, 20 yards. Bates with one catch, 17 yards. And Arm all with one catch. Okay, go on to the score and summary as we go through. Mm -hmm. uh, start out with a 26 yard pass to Terry McLaurin. They had seven on the Washington. He was answered back later on with a 51 yard field goal from Jigo. Made it 7 3. And second quarter, uh, second quarter, Washington answered with another touchdown. 21 yard pass to Dobson, make it 2014 to 3. Uh, the Eagles names are back with a 16 yard pass to AJ Brown, made it 14 to 10. 14 10. Then Sly with a 61 yard field goal, made it 17 10, going half. The Eagles answered back in the third quarter with a 25 yard pass to AJ Brown, made it 17 17, tied it up. Thomas with a 7 yard pass to two, caught a 7 yard pass, made it 24 to 17. Eagles answered back with a 30-year touchdown pass to Devontae Smith. And another touchdown to Julio Jones at the turnover. They had 31-24. Eagles answered back. Or after that, uh, Eagles answered back at the turn. They had 38-24 with a 7-yard run to Devontae Smith with Deontay Swift with a fake Philly shove. More like, more like I call it a Philly sweep. And Washington answered right back late with a 26-yard pass to Crowder, made it 38-31. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the defensive side of the stats here. One moment. So, do, 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 do. Okay, uh, first downs. Washington had 26 first downs. Eagles had 21. Uh, five through ground, 20 in the air for Washington. Eagles with three in the run, 17 through the air. And one each by penalty. Well, both teams were good on third down. Both teams had a 50%. Eagles were eight for 13, 61%. Washington was seven for eight, 58%. Eagles did convert one fourth down. Washington was 0 for three. Okay, and deep on the side of the ball. Eagles, Dean with 11, 12 tackles combined. And two for losses. Reed Blankenship with eight tackles and one interception. Brown with eight tackles. Barb, the new required free new safety with seven tackles. Cutting him with five tackles. Uh, Son Reg with a three tackles and a key one sack. That was on a fourth down. Slay with three tackles. Bright Bay with three tackles. Uh, Tupo with three tackles. Smith with two tackles. Fletcher Cox with two tackles. Ricks with two tackles. Williams with a tackle with a one tackle. Car with one tackle. Sweat with one tackle. Street with one tackle. Okay, going to the commander side. Mayo with nine tackles. Curl with seven tackles. Butler with seven tackles. Fuller with five tackles. Uh, Sweat with five tackles. One sack. Uh, let's see. And Hudson with, let me see where we at here. Oh yeah, St. Juice to four tackles. Johnson with four, Davis with four tackles. And Hudson with three. Payne with two, uh, two hill one. Ta one, one tackle and a sack. Marl with one tackle, Fours with one tackle, Smith Woods with one tackle, Young with one tackle, and Allen with one tackle. So my preview for next week. It's a big one. It's Dallas week. At home at Lincoln Financial Field, 425. The question is, can they get pressure to Dak Prescott and force Dak Prescott to throw the ball when he's not ready and force him to throw the ball? Can they cover the receivers of the Cowboys? It's going to be a close one. It's going to be a dog fight. I think the Eagles should run the ball more. Don't be surprised to see the Cowboys run the ball more, too, in this game. But overall, it's going to be interesting because you're playing Lincoln Financial Field. Uh, I expect to be a slugfest, drag out, dog fight, you know, rivalry. These two teams despise each other. It's coming. Can Michael Parsons get to Jalen Hurts? What he's going to do? Because he's going against Lane Johnson. His heart's going to be ready. So you'll be a 
not quite a hundred percent, but you know, with one one knee, like you can tell he was limping out there. Uh, it's gonna be interesting how the how this second day is gonna fare against this Cowboy offense and their weapons. And it's gonna be interesting who's gonna cover it, how AJ Brown's gonna be used and against this Cowboy secondary. It's gonna be interesting to see with Gilmore out out there in the field too. So I expect this one to be a close game. I would say a 27-24 will come down to a field goal, that type of deal. 27-24. It would come down. The U.S. can have more because run the ball with more. I guess Johnny Swift more carries, at least 20. Then Hurts can do his thing with his receivers. It's going to be interesting to see. Eagles just find ways to win, and you have Dallas at 5 and 2. So you can't count out the Cowboys. They're a good team. Uh, it's going to be tough for them. So. You, We'll have to wait and see with these two teams, these two rivalries clash. But you can't count them out. The U.S. don't get any success running the ball and pass the ball. Dallas is most likely going to pick them apart. I mean, this is going to be interesting to see how this team responds between the Cowboys. I know the U.S. got barred, and he's one of those guys who has picked off Dak Prescott before. But we'll see what happens. But it's going to be interesting. The U.S. can go 8-1 or 5-2. So... Or eight, six, and, or seven and two. So before the bye week, but it's good. this is good. next part of the schedule is going to be really, really tough because you got the Cowboys, then you got the bye week will help your team now get the rest that you guys need. Then you have Monday night against Kansas City, then Buffalo, then San Francisco, then back to Dallas and Seattle Giants, Cardinals, Giants. So it's going to be really tough. So. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. It, it's not easy. These next games are not going to be easy. It's going to be put to the test. Uh, the bye week will help them out, especially week 10, get them rested, get them more healthier. Uh, Monday night against Kansas City, that's not going to be an easy task. You're facing against the Super Bowl champions in Arrowhead, so that's going to be interesting. That'll be a good one. Buffalo, you don't know what Buffalo, how they're going to get with Josh Allen. He could be Josh Allen, look like MB. You know, like he's been there before or different version of him. Uh, four and eight with three straight laws. I don't know what's going on with them. I know much of it was in concussion program, but he's back. But they lost three straight. Can they get back on the winning trade? But this is another game as we circle on the counter because four and eight want to get revenge of the Eagles at Lincoln Financial Field for what happened last year in the NFC Championship game when the U.S. knocked out both quarterbacks, Purdy and their emergency force trainer. Then they tried to douse for setting night game and it, it texts at Cowboys at ATT State. And then they go back and then they travel to the, go on the road again to another tough team in the Seahawks. Then back home against the Giants and Cardinals and in week 18 at New York Giants. So it's going to be a tough, tough road ahead. So right now they're looking and looking pretty good. They're seven one. Uh three more ones they could most likely be in the most likely be in the playoffs. So three more ones they're pretty much I say clinched. And but they want the home field. They want everybody to come through their house. So we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. It's gonna be a good clash between rivals Sunday. Looking forward to maybe seeing a little bit of it. Maybe. Who knows? Anyway, if you like my talk, football talk, week eight, week eight recap, please like, please comment, and also please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. I thank all my subscribers for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, and viewing. Without you, I won't be doing these. So thank you, everybody. Hope you had a safe and wonderful Friday. Mundine, I'll see you next time. Take care, stay safe, stay humble, and be a blessing.